Now what are the major works of seerah that we have today? By far the most famous source of biography is Ibn Ishaq. But that wasn't the first one. Before him, the first person who formally put together a biography for the Prophet, who compiled a biography, was a man by the name of Urwa ibn Zubair ibn al-Awam. The famous Zubair, this is his son, the Prophet's cousin. So he's a distant relative to the Prophet. Now he died in the year 92 after the Hijrah. So we're talking about a century after the Prophet, almost a century. This was the first work of biography of Sirah on the Prophet's life. Now his work did not survive in history. We know that he authored a biography, but it got lost in history. Today we cannot find his book, we don't have access to it. But this was the earliest source on the Prophet's life. We had books of hadith that talk about some aspects of the Prophet's life, but this was an effort solely to give us an idea of the Prophet's life. It was a work of biography. So this is one work. Another more important source is Ibn Ishaq. Whenever you examine the Prophet's life, the history of the Prophet, the seerah and the biography, the two most famous names are who? Ibn Ishaq and who? Ibn Hisham. Now Ibn Ishaq, he came about eight decades after the Prophet. He lived in the city of Medina. He had this passion to record everything about the Prophet's life. He would go to the people of Medina, he would ask them, what did you hear from your parents about the Prophet? Those who lived with the Prophet, give me details. He would even travel to various cities to interview people who had met the Prophet or their parents had met the Prophet to learn about the Prophet's life. And he compiled a book that was about 15 big volumes at the time. This was, you know, at the time a very, very big effort. So Ibn Ishaq is the first one who really compiled a comprehensive seerah and biography on the Prophet's life. Yes. So Sayyid, is this kind of like what happened with the final uh, Imam when he goes into the Ghaiba, how many things become lost because there's nobody there to like record it? This is one of When the Imam Ali Salam went into Ghaiba, before he went into Ghaiba, we already had hadith books. The previous Imams of Ahlul Bayt, whatever we needed to know, they gave it to us. Some things did get lost in history, but the most important aspects of Islamic knowledge were passed down to us. For example, in the book of Kafi. Mm -hmm. So this is different with the challenge that we see after the Prophet's life, because there was a ban on the recording of the hadith. So Ibn Ishaq, he compiled this huge work, but did it survive in history? No, it didn't. Why? Because it was 10 to 15 volumes. Remember at the time, there was no paper that was easily accessible. And you couldn't just make copies of it. You had to have a scribe who would sit there and write every word and every sentence and carrying that was just burdensome. So it was something that the average person would not have access to. What happened is one of his indirect students who is Ibn Hisham. Now Ibn Ishaq, what year did he pass away? He died in the year 150 Hijrah. He was born around the year 85. So he was born about eight decades after the Prophet. He lived for about 70 years until the year 150 after the Hijrah. So one and a half centuries after the Prophet. Now there was a man by the name of Ibn Hisham. Ibn Hisham was a famous historian. What he did, he took the seerah of Ibn Ishaq and he summarized it. And the seerah of Ibn Ishaq that we have today is not the original seerah that he compiled, the 10 to 15 volumes. That got lost in history. What survived until today? The work of Ibn Hisham. Ibn Hisham took this big book, he realized it's too big, it's full of details, he summarized it for us. He deleted a lot of details, he made some additions here and there. So the book of Sirah that we have from Ibn Ishaq was actually edited by Ibn Hisham.
So the two biggest names in the biography of the Prophet, the seal of the Prophet are Ibn Ishaq and Ibn Hisham. But we don't have the actual work of Ibn Ishaq. What survived is the edition of who? Of Ibn Hisham. What's the title of his book or his volumes? Who? Ibn Ishaq? Ibn Hisham, so he summarized the he summarized the seerah of the Holy Prophet from, it's attributed to, to Ibn Hisham, but it's really for Ibn Ishaq. So it's just the seerah of the Prophet Yeah, yeah, we have it today. Ibn Hisham's seerah, it survives. It's, it's just the seerah of the Prophet So he is the one who summarized to us the book of Ibn Ishaq. Now I don't know what was the original title of the book of Ibn Ishaq because it did not really survive in history. But Ibn Hisham, he passed it to us. So today, if you want to find this book, it's just, you know, uh, called Sirat Ibn Hisham. That's the short for it. If you're looking for it online, or if you want to buy it, and it's in Arabic, of course, some parts of it have been, or all of it, I think, has been translated into English. So if you can just look up Sirat Ibn Hisham, you will find the book. And it's also called Sirat Ibn Ishaq as well, because it's the same. He just summarized it and he edited it for us. Now, Ibn Hisham, he died in the year 218. So we're talking about two centuries after the Prophet. Now, there were other attempts. So there were seven other seerahs on the Prophet's life, but they never made it in history. They also got lost in history. Now, the third, more fam the third most famous seerah is one that was offered by Ibn Sa'd in his book, At-Tabaqat Al-Kubra. They call it Tabaqat ibn Sa'd. Or you can just say for short, Sirat ibn Sa'd. The biography of ibn Sa'd. Ibn Sa'd died in the year 230 after Hijrah. So this is also one of the important works on the Prophet's life. And then you have a more recent one by the name of At-Tabari. He has a book on the history of kings and rulers. And in that he also analyzes a lot of the Prophet's biography, and you'll find many uh, scholars or speakers referring to Tabaqat ibn Sa'd in speaking about the Prophet's life. He died in the year 923, so about 500 years ago. So these are the main works of biography on the Prophet's life. So the first one who really compiled something comprehensive was Ibn Ishaq, but it did not survive through history. What survived was the summary of Ibn Hisham. So the most important book of Sirah that we have today is the book by Ibn Hisham called Sirat Ibn Hisham. So this is the, bi the uh, biography of the Prophet that we have. Okay, that's a good question. Now it is commonly known that they are of the Ahlul Sunnah, however Ibn Ishaq, if you go to the literalist uh, Sunnis, like the Hanbalis, the Wahhabis, they don't like Ibn Ishaq and his biography. Ahmed ibn Hanbal, the leader of the Hanbali school of thought, he had an issue with a lot of things that Ibn Ishaq would narrate. Some of them were valid, some of his observations, but some of them no. And they accused him of being a Shia. So they accused Ibn Ishaq of being Shia. Why? For two reasons. The primary reason is because sometimes he mentions some details about some of those Khulafa, the early Caliphs, that they did not like. They're like, wait a minute, you're exposing these Caliphs. Where did you get this from? Since they did not like that, they rejected it and they accused him of being a Shia. Al-Waqidi was another historian who wrote biographies of the Prophet. Harun al-Abbasi employed al-Waqidi. Also because they had an issue of some of, with the, some of the things he would write, they accused him of, of being a Shia. Now we really don't know what the beliefs of Ibn Ishaq were. He is compared to some others who were extreme towards Ahl bayt He was definitely moderate. He was not anti-Shia. Now whether he was Shia or not, that's subject to interpretation. Uh, some people might consider him close to the Shias. Some people just consider him to be a Sunni, but not an extreme Sunni. He was a moderate Sunni. 
But some have accused him throughout history of being a Sunni. You said, you said there were two reasons. So one of them was that he exposed... So, what, so one of them was that he, he exposed some of the caliphs. The other, he would document some of the virtues of Imam Ali that they didn't like. So... so do they have any equivalent in... Uh, they really don't have an equivalent. What they did is they looked at Bukhari, Muslim, Tirmidhi, these hadith books, and they tried... Uh, to give a picture of the Prophet's life based on the hadiths in their books. So it's nothing comprehensive. They're forced, you know, at the end of the day to accept some of Ibn Ishaq's works because the hadith books are not biographies. They're about laws, rulings, different events. And there's a lot of biography in them. Like Bukhari does have some biography, but it's not a book of biography. It's a hadith book. It's a, it's a book of what the Prophet said, what he taught, what he preached, but not necessarily his life in chronological order. Ibn Ishaq, what he did with his biography, he examined the life of the Prophet in a chronological order. So, um, the edited version uh, by Ibn Hisham, is it uh, having the virtues of the Mamadi and the... It does have some of it. Um, he deleted some of them, of course. Maybe either due to taqiyya or due to, you know, um, he wanted to summarize it and be brief about it. But yes, there were some things that were deleted. And taqiyya is definitely one of the reasons. And what did you say about Al-Waqidi? Al-Waqidi, he, some also considered him to be Shia. He was uh, in the second to the third centuries, so during the time of Al-Imam Al-Sadiq and Al-Imam al kadhim he was employed by Harun al-Abbasi to write the seerah of the Prophet. Now his work, um, the way that he wrote it did not survive. Uh, some parts of it through his students did survive. So we do have some instances and accounts from the work of Waqidi. But you'll find that those strict Sunnis, let's say, they don't accept it because they considered him to be a Shia.